Hello students, welcome to my channel Maths Hub. So today in this video, I'll tell you a new method to calculate the solution of a particular integral, which is known as the variation of parameter method, right? So we have seen in the past videos that we were applying certain rules to calculate the particular solution, right? But you can see that in those rules, the functions are defined and they are limited functions. Either you can apply the rules to exponential functions or sine cos or sine hyperbolic cos hyperbolic or maybe some powers of x. And then added features we had was a product function when one of them is exponential and the other function has to be any one of the functions that we have studied. Similarly, you can apply the rule to x into v functions also, right? But apart from these, there are many other functions where you cannot apply the rules. So if you are working with a second order linear differential equation, then you can always apply the variation of parameter method, though this method also has certain limitations. So let us first understand this method and then I'll tell you that where we cannot apply this method, right? So for this method, let us consider a differential equation y double dash plus px into y dash plus qx into y is equal to rx. Generally, we are dealing with constant coefficients. So p and q, they are not functions of x, but they will be some constants, right? So the first part of the solution is the complementary solution. So we will calculate the complementary solution with the usual techniques. And let us assume that the complementary solution is c1 fx plus c2 dx. Now, fx and gx can be any function. It can be exponential, it can be sine cos, depending upon the nature of the roots, right? Now, taking this into consideration, we assume our particular solution to be, we will just replace the constant c1 and c2 with some functions ux and vx. So, if this is the particular solution, fx and gx are known to us, right? But we have to calculate ux and vx. Now, how to calculate this ux and vx? We calculate ux and vx with the help of this term that is called the Rongskian. Rongskian is nothing but it is the determinant of the matrix where we keep the functions fx and gx in the numerator and we keep their derivatives, the first derivatives in the denominator, right? So the second row is the derivatives and we take the determinant and this determinant should not be equal to zero. Then how do we calculate these functions ux and vx? ux is calculated using the rule minus integration gx. So we will take the, when we are calculating ux, we will take into consider the other function gx, right? So it is gx into what is rx, right? rx is the right hand side function that is given to us in the problem, right? And then we divide this term with Rongskian and we take the integration with respect to x. Similarly, how to calculate vx? Now, vx is with gx, so we will take the other function that is fx into picture. So, this is integration fx into the right hand side function divided by the Rongskian and the integration with respect to x. Finally, after we calculate the values of ux and vx, we put it back in yp and we get yp as minus fx into this integration plus gx into this integration. So this is the method of variation of parameter method, right? Now, what is the limitation of this method? Firstly, this method is only applicable to a second order derivative, right? Secondly, you can see that we are dividing in the integration by Rongskian. So if any case Rongskian happens to become zero, then can we apply it? No, because we cannot divide by zero, right? So that is why this is the mandatory condition given to us that this method is only applicable when Rongskian is not equal to zero. Right? And if the wrong scale is not equal to zero, then only we say that fx and gx are two linearly independent solutions. Right? Okay. Now, let us do this problem and try to apply this method here. Solve the differential equation y double dash plus 9y is equal to tan 3x. So, we need to first of all solve the complementary solution. So, what is there in the complementary solution? Let us see. We have y double dash plus 9y equal to 0. This is the complementary part. So we reduce this into a homogeneous solution. So I'm not telling you the steps for that. I'm directly writing the algebraic equation. So it is m square plus 9. And you will get a y around it equal to 0. So from here, m comes out to be plus minus 3 iota, right? So, what is my complementary solution? Complementary solution is C1 
cos 3x plus c2 sin 3x. Right? So, according to my complementary solution, what is my particular integral? My particular integral will be ux into cos 3x plus vx into sin 3x. Right? Now, what is ux? I'll just write it with a different pen. ux is minus integration. ux is attached with cos 3x. I'll take the other function that is sin 3x. Multiplied by the right hand side function. Right hand side function is tan 3x. And I need to divide it by the wrong skin. So let us first calculate the wrong skin. So what is my wrong skin? Wrong skin is the functions cos and sin in the first row. So we have cos 3x and sin 3x. Now take the derivative. Derivative of cos 3x is minus 3 sin 3x. And derivative of sine 3x is 3 cos 3x. So when you take the determinant, you will get 3 cos squared 3x plus 3 sine square 3x. So you can take out 3 common, you will get cos squared 3x plus sine squared 3x, that is 3, so which is a non-zero term, right? So your wrong skin is nothing but 3. So let us write 3 here and integration with respect to x. Now, let us solve this integration first before we calculate the value of vx, right? Now, you can reduce this. You can take out 1 by 3 common. So, we have sin 3x into cos and 3x is sine by cos. So, it will become sine squared 3x divided by cos 3x. Now, how to integrate it? We can further write sine squared 3x as 1 minus cos squared 3x divided by cos 3x dx. So this is 1 by 3 integration of 1 by cos 3x is secant 3x minus integration of cos square by cos is cos 3x. Right? Okay. So now this is 1 by 3 times. So this is 1 by 3 is common to all the terms. So this is 1 by 3. What is integration of secant 3x? It is log secant 3x plus tan 3x divided by 3, right? And what is integration of cos 3x? Integration of cos 3x, there's a minus sign in between. So it is minus cos 3x integration is sin 3x by 3. So this becomes your ux. Now let us try to calculate vx. Now what is vx? Vx is the term associated with sin 3x. So, we will take the integration of cos 3x into the right hand side function that is tan 3x divided by the wrong skin 3 dx. So, how much is this sin by cos? So, cos gets cancelled. We have 1 by 3 integration of sin 3x dx. And what is integration of sin? It is minus cos 3x by 3. So finally, what is our answer then? Our answer turns out to be y is equal to yc plus yp. So yc is c1 cos 3x plus c2 sin 3x. And what is our yp? yp is ux multiplied by cos 3x. So we can write this term as log secant 3x plus tan 3x minus sin 3x and you can see that we have a common denominator 9 multiplied by the term cos 3x, right? So we have cos 3x here and then we have vx. vx is minus 1 by 3. So this is minus 1 by 3. Or I can write this as minus 1 by 9. Right? This is minus 1 by 9 cos 3x multiplied by sin. So this comes out to be our answer. Right? Okay. So I hope you have understood the problem. So now let us move on to the next problem. So the next problem is we need to solve d square y by dx square plus y is equal to secant x. Right? How to solve this? 
So what is our auxiliary equation? It is d square plus 1 is equal to 0. So we get m square plus 1 is equal to 0. So m comes out to be plus minus iota. So what is your y complementary solution? It is c1 cos x plus c2 sin x. Right? So corresponding to this, your particular integral becomes ux into cos x plus vx into sin x. Right? So let's calculate the Rangskian first. Rangskian is cos x sin x and take their derivative in the next row. So derivative of cos x will become minus sin x. Derivative of sin x will become cos x. So it's cos square x plus sin square x which is 1. So what is now your ux? ux is minus integration sin x into the right hand side function that is cosecant x dx. So cosecant is 1 by sine, so it is simply minus integration 1 is x. Right? Now let's calculate what is bx. bx is integration cos x into cosecant x dx. Right? So now this is cos x by sine x. So we will get log of sin x as our integral. Right? So finally, what is your y? y is c1 cos x plus c2 sin x plus or you can say minus x into cos x plus log sin x into sin x. Right? So this comes out to be our general solution. Right? So I hope you have understood the method right so do write to me if there is any doubt and if you like the video do hit the like button and those of you who have not subscribed my channel do subscribe my channel and those of you who have subscribed share it with your known ones who want these videos to learn the topics right and believe in yourself and you will succeed thank you so much